You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 31st, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where my job is safe, at least until after the midterms, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Hey, darling. How you doing? I'm oh, looking forward to a long weekend. Me too. We had a real proud moment with Junior Dude. We did? Yeah, well, I, I mean, did. I mean, yeah, we did. We definitely <laughs> did. Just pulling your leg, dude. Just pulling your leg. He uh, decided that he ha- was having too much fun up in school, so he's not going to come home this weekend. Okay, and, too much fun and, you know, to come home is progress. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is progress. Like, I'm not lonely. I'm not sad. I'm not homesick. And, you know, I'm sure he's got uh, careful, alcohol parties careful. and other... <laughs> alcohol parties and other uh events and activities that mom doesn't know about. Yes. He's got activities. That, you know. He's got activities, so <laughs> as as many college sophomores do. So they do. That's, they do. And he's, that's what happens. He's yeah. a college sophomore now and he's he's doing really well. Yeah. Um and everyone is now uh a high schooler as of this year. Right. Right. He did the right. open house last this week, actually. Yeah, how, what that was was that your first high school open house as a parent? Well, uh, uh-huh. yes, okay, uh, that was my first high school open house that I recall. Not the first high school event. We we've gone to uh, scholastic events and so forth. Right, where we met teachers right. and stuff. But yeah, my first high school open house. High and, school uh, open house because yeah. we have we now have two in high school, so we have to tag team everything. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so you got to meet middle child's uh, teachers, all, and- all the teachers, and and. All the parents. And, and I did the see. routine for youngest child. So yeah. and she's in ninth grade and middle child's in 10th grade. They're a year apart. And they seem to be handling it very well. You know, the separate yeah. friend groups and then the togetherness and then the games and then the everything seems to be working out. Fingers crossed so far. Yeah. Uh, getting on to the show because there's so much to cover. Uh, Drift Glass, really we, have, we really have to celebrate our newest sponsor. Our newest yes, fake let's celebrate sponsor. celebrate it with, with perhaps a beverage of some <laughs> perhaps kind. Perhaps a beverage. Our newest fake sponsor is I Can't Believe He's President, Handmade Vodka and Coffee and Answer. Do you wake up every morning with one question and one question only? What has he done now? You're not alone. And now there's a product that won't make it better, might make it worse, but at least it's a reason to get out of bed in the morning. I Can't Believe He's President, Handmade Vodka and Coffee Enhancer. A shot in your morning cup of coffee and sipping it straight throughout the day. I can't believe he's president. Handmade vodka and coffee enhancer may just make you pass out into a sweet unconsciousness where the worst political scandal is a legitimately elected president's tan suit. I can't believe he's president. Yeah. The only uh, dispute I have with the good people that I can't believe he's president, coffee and vodka enhancer. (laughs) Vodka uh, and coffee enhancer. (laughs) uh, Now I just, I just cost us a sponsorship. So, (laughs) You cut all this out, I hope. Um, is the idea of waking up in the morning? I sit bolt up right at three a.m. Yeah, going, yeah. holy shit! And then I wind down a little bit Seriously. and look at look at my wife, and she's still there, and everyone's still breathing. I usually do, and this is sometimes literally true. I do a walk around the perimeter of the house mm-hmm. just to make sure you know we're still alive on planet Earth. Not, there's no like flashes of nuclear fire on the horizon. Um, and I'm not alone. I'm sure yeah. there are millions and millions and millions of people who are in the same situation. Right, losing so. sleep over what's yeah. going on in our country. Absolutely. Yeah. We had also had uh, that same night as the open house, a little adventure in our house. We had a we bat in our house, which we if did. you live in, you know, corn country like we do, is a is I wouldn't say it's a common occurrence, but it's not an uncommon occurrence. It's not impossible. My my first experience with nature when I came down here uh, <laughs> many, many years ago was watching a very large hawk. Yeah. I mean, like the length of my forearm right. sitting upright, which is a very big bird sitting on the street light across uh, from our house, mm-hmm. um, uh, waiting for the bunny that was hiding in the bushes oh to gosh. make it. Yeah. Um, 
and we've had possums and raccoons and I've, we've seen deer galloping through the streets and a bunch of other things. But uh, this was our first bat. Yeah. Yeah. This was uh, our first bat inside the house. Yes, definitely. House. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And little thing. And uh, the cats, one of them got the bat cornered in the living room for a few, few seconds, but then yes. he flew around a little more. And I recalled then I was like, okay, this has happened to me at least once before with my dad. And I recalled back in the day, in the 70s, my dad taking a vinyl record album and a hat and catching the bat with that. And uh, so you got out a laundry basket. <laughs> well, first of all, we, we only have CDs. so Right, we that was not going to work. But we ha- but you, we did have a little laundry basket available and, and a broom, broom and figured it out and got he, he flew away outside. So uh, no it's harm done. Snatched him out of the air, got him on the ground, and swept him swept out the him door. Swept him out the door, and he, door flew, and he away. flew away. He did. He was fine. He he was flying when I saw him go out the door, so he's okay. He or she. And uh, but uh, just so you know, if you think we don't live in corn country, just right out in the middle of uh, rural America, uh, we definitely do. Well, actually, a couple of other things happened that day. In addition to the open house, uh, youngest child got blood stains oh, on her Tupac on her shirt. Tupac shirt. Yes, <laughs> which is. Made a- and made a beeline for me. She did. She said, you know, drift glass. She didn't say drift glass, but stepdad, please, because ha- you're the laundry guy. I'm the laundry guru. Yeah. Guru. And uh, she, she just immediately wanted you to fix it. She wanted a pristine two-pack shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and so you took yeah. care of that. <laughs> Revolution ain't what it used to be, Blue Gal. No, it ain't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But this, that was also the day that I, I – as I was walking into uh, the breakfast joint to get my wife a muffin. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Who was walking out but my soon-to-be-deposed Republican congressman? Unbelievable. Rodney Davis. So I, I cold-cocked him. Yeah. Uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, would you like to hear something I heard off the record? From Donald Trump? Because everybody's about, reporting about, what he did off the record today. You know, but About Rodney Davis. Oh, okay. Yeah, Remember yeah, told- right. You told me about yeah. this. And this yeah. is, this is uh, an, yes, it is anonymously sourced. Yes. It is from a what you consider a trusted source, however. Incredibly reliable mm-hmm. source, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Rodney Davis does not do town halls because he's a Republican running for Congress and in Illinois, and he's a coward. Yeah, um, along he, with hundreds of other Republican congressmen, yeah, literally, this is their, utterly gutless, what they're doing. Um, yeah. And he's soon to be out of a job. Uh, the uh, the person who's going to replace him, Betsy Jerkson Lonergan, does lots of town halls and goes to lots of public events. But Mr. Rodney Davis was at a uh, question and answer session where questions are submitted in on card form, and the person who heard this was was kicking himself for not recording it because there was no like oath of privacy. Mm-hmm. It's just that nobody thought to take their phone out and record what he was saying. But it was vetting the candidate. That this happens a lot. I was. Um, I was with the Illinois uh, Voters, Independent Voters of Illinois, Independent Precinct Organization for a number of years up in Chicago. And that's what we did. You know, we'd have sit candidates down and ask them all the same question or, or like questions. And the question came up about Charlottesville. Mm-hmm. And what do you think of that? What do you think of white supremacists? And Rodney Davis's answer was, Roughly speaking, he said, paraphrasing what I've had, what I heard secondhand was, well, you know, there are bad people on both sides. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the on the right, you, of course, you have these neo Nazis, these these white supremacists. They're very bad, but you, on the left, you have Antifa too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, the left is pretty violent. What with the shooting of Congressman Scalise and all, and and then he went on to uh, to equate um, Nancy Pelosi with neo Nazis. Yep. And that's when the people who were asking them the questions, basically the entire formal Q&A portion of our show broke down. And it was like, are you fucking kidding yeah. me? Yeah. Uh, they, they did it polite because we're, we're polite here in the Midwest. But he really is that big of a coward. He really is wrapping himself around Donald Trump and, and providing just a little tiny bit of distance between himself and the neo-Nazi in the White House. Uh, and that's the little space through which he hopes to run to reelection. Yep. And it was just appalling. The people who were the people who uh, the guy who I talked to said, "Look, I you know, I, I'm a forgiving guy. I you know, I, I, but I'm so angry." Was this a this. This, I am so wasn't angry. this a Jewish group he was speaking to? As it, well? it, it probably was. I'm not going to say for sure because I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Okay. But I will say yes, it was a Jewish. <laughs> group. And and again, I'm paraphrasing secondhand. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but this is what I heard from my, what a, a source that I trust very much mm -hmm. who was there and said, I just can't believe he said this. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe that's where we come from. But he is, A, personally terrified uh, for his personal safety, and B, he just has to stick with the Trump party line. And the furthest he can stray from it is, well, Antifa and and uh, Nancy Pelosi are just as bad. Yep. And, and that's I, I, our I, One of the now. things that Rodney Davis is doing is wrapping himself in the memory of actually being at the baseball game where Steve Scalise was shot. And that's a terrible thing. I mean, I, I imagine that does scar you and make you afraid. And I, I don't have any uh, criticism for being scarred by that experience. That, that no. is normal. You know, that's a normal reaction. Uh, that said, there is uh, a lack of town halls that predates that to the yeah. beginning of his tenure in Congress. And he just he like a lot of other congressmen just quote unquote doesn't believe in town halls because they're terrible for them because they tried to take away health insurance from thirty million people and uh, people are mad about that and having yes. TV footage of your own constituents being mad at you is not something that's going to help you get reelected. No. Uh, just so uh, you know, um, Andy Slavitt, who is, you know, the Ooh. one of the premier ACA authors as well as defenders. And on Twitter. And I, it went on Twitter last night and asked people about town halls and their Republican congressmen who voted against ACA. Please let me know in reply to this tweet if you if you have a Republican congressman who voted against ACA and whether or not they hold town halls. And in two hours, he had over 200 people tell him, my Republican congressman voted against ACA, voted to repeal multiple times, and refuses to hold a town hall about it. And it is a vote and run, you know, run from your own constituents well, thing. I get the impression that they are all trying to take a page out of Ron DeSantis' book. Yeah, well, yeah. Run on Fox. You know, run just on run Fox. in the media. Yeah. Yep. Nothing but an air game, nothing on the ground. You yep. know, the, the meetings you have will all be carefully contained. Um, there'll be no real exchanges. There's going to be, I think, one debate that's going to be mm -hmm. hosted by our newspaper, and that'll mm -hmm. be fine. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, there's a real clear uh, line of demarcation now. It's we can't afford to be seen with angry people pointing fingers at us because that's what we did. Mm -hmm. When the Kenyan usurper was going to make our country into Russia. Right. <laughs> and we remember how successful that was when we lied about shit. Imagine how terrifying it is that they have these big truth cannons pointed at us and will yeah. and will come at us every time we stick our head out in public. Right. So, right. Right. Um, in fact, um, uh, a friend of ours had this um, um, that we have a, an adult Sunday school class and I'm not going to break any confidences here, but came up against the question of what do you do when you see someone in public? Mm -hmm. that needs to be shamed. <laughs> and I think that's a, a much, uh, a very interesting question, a different question for a different day. But we did have, believe it or not, at our church, a really good, meaty, uh, nutritionally high value discussion about the difference between a, a person who has a, who's a public figure versus someone who takes a public right. position versus right. a citizen, what the venues are, what what power relationships are at play when you know when Sarah Sanders is told very quietly to get out of the restaurant uh, in the nicest possible way um, versus yelling at some poor guy in public who right. didn't vote the way you wanted him to? Yeah, no, that's so, true. Pun punching up versus punching down. Yeah, yeah. We do have interesting conversations uh, in our little town. We we really do. Uh, um, we want to get started at the on the, the news, news roundup. Yeah. Uh, did you watch any of Aretha Franklin's funeral this morning? I heard it coming out of my wife's office. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I was streaming it for most of the morning. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I'm not a huge Reverend Al fan. I'm just not. Uh, I'm not at all Reverend Al fans. So, okay. <laughs> but he did uh, read Barack Obama's letter uh, to the audience uh, to great effect. Uh, he also... Um, I thought called out Trump in a very specific, appropriate way, which is Trump said when he heard that Aretha Franklin had died, oh, she worked for me. Right. And he said, 
Reverend Al said, she didn't work for you. She performed for you. And she worked for us. <laughs> and I thought, yeah. oh, and, you know, the audience went wild. Uh, well said. She didn't take orders from anyone but God. And right. at that point, when he said that, even her own children stood up. Or her, her yeah. The young people yeah. in her family, I don't know if they were her kids, but the young people in the family row stood up and applauded that. Um, I was, I'm very impressed hearing how much she did, how much fundraising she did, how much uh, behind the scenes activism, how many checks she wrote uh, mm -hmm. for her people and for the cause of civil rights and women's rights and so forth. And uh, she didn't do she I didn't hear about that because she didn't do that for me. <laughs> you know, she that wasn't I was not about that. That was she was not about well, me. Didn't, so she didn't haul a spotlight. Exactly. Around saying, Look at me. <laughs> Look what I did. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm um, impressed. And uh, you know, I, I loved the service because you really do get a sense of where the moral center of this country is. <laughs> you do. That's yeah. pretty much all I have to say. Uh, yeah. Well, and it it felt like a funeral week. Well, it is a funeral week. It's it's a John yeah. McCain's funeral as well, and uh, yeah. uh, Megan McCain is is taking it very very hard. And uh, yeah. it, today, it, the the scene that I saw of Mike Pence, uh, you know, you don't want to yeah, bring the, right. all this stuff up because she's in mourning and. Any, but anything anybody says right now could go wrong. But when he, when Mike Pence said the president asked me to be here, and she just gave him a look like, just you know, lightning bolt, please come down and Burn. strike this guy. <laughs> was the look on her face? Burn the ground. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, she's grieving. So uh, to try to sort of bring politic politics into that is not what I want to do. Um, well, and I, I have a provisional headline or provisional title for our, uh -huh. our podcast. Um, which is uh, President von Hindenburg is dead. Yeah. And explain what you mean by that. Uh, well, uh, President von Hindenburg was the president of Germany um, who appointed, you know, who, who, who was required, who had to bring the Nazi party into his coalition government mm -hmm. um, to, to control them, to mollify them, to, to pacify them, to sort of, you know, make peace with them. And then he died. Yeah. And that left the path wide open for uh, Hitler's rise to from, you know, from Chancellor to Fuhrer yeah. to be the the man and to take over the government. He had his people ready. You know, he knew what he wanted. He knew exactly how to get there. The old guard was weak and didn't know how to cope with someone like this. Germany was on its knees. Um, and it's it's not a, a great analogy. It's not a perfect one, but it, it's the first thing that popped into my head, maybe because you and I are watching Babylon Berlin. Yes, and thanks to John and, Amato for recommending that to us because it really yeah, is yeah. a good uh, show. Babylon Berlin is on and Netflix. It's, and it's about Germany between the wars. And it's a German show. We, you can listen to it. Yes. There's a setting. You can listen to it with subtitles or you can listen to it with dub, dubbed. Um, because I knit while I'm watching television, I always do the dubbed, even though it's a little bit of a uh, disjointed, not the way it's supposed to be presented way to do it. But that's how I. Well, and I'm, I'm currently reading Chicago by David Mamet, which is about uh, Chicago between yeah, the wars. Yeah. So that's and same period. occasionally I pick up another episode of Peaky Blinders, which is about England between same the wars. Period. There's a yep. real specific subset here and i'm not seeking these things out but i'm finding them no this is what this is where art is right now because this is where we are right now is that we exactly. are at a exactly. turning point where we either choose democracy or choose fascism as a world yeah. not just a nation so the battle against fascism is a theme is a major theme that you can't miss in modern That's drama right. and <laughs> art yes yeah. well and president von hindenburg in this way again it's not a perfect analogy but Watching them bury John yeah, McCain, yeah. the last restraining bolt on the Republican Party is gone. In terms of in uh, terms of ACA, that's for sure. And this, in, in terms of any any pretense that they are anything other than either uh, an outright white nationalist fascist right. party, or they are under the boot heel and willing to bend the knee to fascists because. Russia has dirt on them because they're craven, because of political ambition, all the horrible reasons, all, all the horrible reasons that anyone 
of this type should never be allowed to hold office is exactly who these Republicans are now. So whatever Lin, whatever Russia has Seriously. on Lindsey Graham, um, you know the 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 take the dis- difference between what he says about John McCain at the occasion of mm-hmm. his death and his actions after his friend has passed away are night and day. And so it's not physically true. It's not literally historically accurate. But the idea that we are putting in the ground the last vestige of a Republican Party that even pretended to care about anything other than raw power grabs, racism, and tax cuts for Democrats. Yep. That's it. He's gone. And now we're squared off for a real fight. And that's what brings us to the news today, which is Ron DeSantis, number one, yes, out of the box. Yes, our news roundup. Ron DeSantis, who Uh is the candidate from Fox. And this is something that his Republican opponent in the primary tried to point out, which is he's not spending any time in Florida. He is on Fox News hundreds of times. Literally 121 121 times. times. From the moment moment, uh, Donald Trump endorsed him to the moment he won the primary, he was on Fox 121 Mm -hmm. times. Translates into about $9 to $10 million in free publicity free campaign contributions because it's not a campaign contribution. It's a TV appearance. And this is how Donald Trump won the entire, a billion dollars in free publicity because he was good for ratings. Well, now it's no longer a question of ratings. Now it really is. We're going to target our, our laser beam of stupid and racism. And we don't need local politics anymore. We don't need to, to run on the ground anymore. We now have this ability to just, shove our candidate down the throats of the people who we want to vote our way because there is no intermediary. There's no there's no media they turn to anymore right. except Fox. So boom, right. there you go. So uh, we have the quote apparently uh, that Donald Trump uh, is upset, got leaked to the Canadians today. Yeah. Uh, do you fucking morons have a clue what off the record means? I hope we fucking take over your piece of shit country and destroy it. You fucking third world back offs need to get a fucking clue. That was just Mike Pence, right? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they all talk like Michael Cohen. You know, well, that's they're a- all want to be ma- they're, they're all want to be mobsters. They all they all think now I use fucking fucker fuckface in yep. a, in a poetic way, in the Chaucerian way, if you will. These yep. guys just all want to be gangsters, and they're too dumb to be actual gangsters. So they, but they talk this way. They're assholes. They're New York asshole mobster wannabes. Yeah. And uh, this is the week that um, Donald Trump said that Jeff Sessions would be allowed to remain as his attorney general, at least until after the midterms, which is darn nice of him. Um, he wants he's pissed because Mueller's investigation is illegal, and he also knows that. I'd love to have him look at the other side. He also claimed that great scholars, great scholars have said there never should have been a special counsel. Now this, you know, this is not a one-off. This is what he says, you know, every 36 hours. Mm -hmm. Um, It really is. It's like the, um, the countdown clock in uh, on, on lost (laughs) (laughs) every, however many minutes or 104 minutes, some completely batshit, self-incriminating primal scream is going to come out of this asshole and they're going to get louder and crazier and more caps locked and more crazy uncle liberty uh the more the the, the walls close in on them and they're mm-hmm. really closing in on them now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, hugh hewitt by the way uh because hugh hewitt doesn't know how to process human emotions mm-hmm. uh he only knows how to process things in terms of because he's a cyborg sent from the future to destroy america everyone you knows said this. that yes um He's he has to find a way to explain Donald Trump's unbelievably evil behavior mm-hmm. in terms of computer malfunction. So he went with memory error. Um, <sighs> the reason Donald Trump forgot to fly the flag at half staff is it was an egregious oversight. He, he forgot. forgot to do it. I forgot <laughs> armed robbery <laughs> was illegal. illegal. <laughs> Hat tip Steve Martin. Um in other news, uh, Paul Manafort associate Sam Patton pleaded guilty today. Yeah. He is cooperating not only with Mueller, but also with New York officials. Uh, Patton is the connection between Manafort and Konstantin Kilimnik, who uh, appears to be a significant link. He's He purchased uh, inauguration tickets <laughs> for Russians <laughs> with money from Cyprus. 
I mean, this is like, you just, you can't get her. You, this is just so swampy. It's the whole thing is just yeah, so swampy. Sure he was scalping them out front for twice the price. <laughs> That's how they laundered Russian money. They bought a whole bunch of shitty and, tickets to Trump rallies. Right. And no, to the inauguration where there yeah, was well. plenty of seating. Okay. <laughs> yes. Beautiful seating right down front. $200. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's. It, it, this, that's is is bad, this, is, this is very bad news for Trump. More bad news for Trump. This uh, is the direct line. His charity. Yeah. Yeah. As a money laundering organization right. and Russian, you know, mobsters. And this was this didn't come out of nowhere. This was the the, the gentleman who allocated, right? Right, right. He did. This, this is, is the guy Patton went before the judge today. There were two people from the Mueller event. This is in New York. Uh no, I'm I'm sorry. I take that back. I believe this was uh before the Manafort judge. So it might have right. been in uh Virginia or DC. In any event, there were people from the Mueller investigation there, as well as from the Trump uh, Foundation uh, charges people there before the federal judge as Patton gave his plea to the judge at, out loud. Uh-huh. You know, that that's what they do. And uh, the Manafort people said, yes, he's cooperating with us, Your Honor. And the Trump Foundation people said, yes, he's cooperating with us, Your Honor, because that all has to happen. You know, who is... Right. Who is this guy? What did he do? How is he cooperating? Is he for real? And the prosecutors have to tell the judge, yes, he's for real. Well, and, so, and ever since George Papadopoulos popped out on the scene, yeah, you know, you get the feeling that there's just a clown car <laughs> full another of one. criminals out there, yeah. of people whose names you will never hear. Or suddenly you'll be reading, who the fuck is Patton? Oh, he's the guy who was the link between the Russian goons. Mm-hmm. And the Trump charity, which was nothing but a money laundering yeah. slush hole. And Manafort. And Donald Trump. And Manafort. And the Manafort. Campaign, oh, of the course. The campaign manager. Yeah. Oh, he's a bag yeah. man. Oh, yes. I get it. He's the fucking bag man. <laughs> and, and I, you know, I really, this flashes me back. I hate to say this. This is probably inappropriate. This flashes me back to 2005 mm-hmm. when we all had to start memorizing the names of obscure Iraqis. Yep. And other people who should never have been called to our attention, but were because a Republican president decided he would go remake part of the world by force yep. on a lie. Well, and I feel and that way a, in, a, in a bad way about all of these FBI agents who work behind the scenes to prosecute yes. the Russian mob. And and because they, that is what they do, they have been singled out by Donald Trump. Right. And Fox News in a collusion between, I mean, the collusion that's going on between Fox News and the White House is nonstop well, and thick as feet. It's not even, it, there should be a word beyond collusion. collusion. Yeah. If, you know, yeah. once you are, once you are actually, you know, bred right. together, crossbred into a single new species, um, because I shouldn't, I shouldn't know Peter Strzok's no, exactly. name. I shouldn't know Bruce Oz's right. name. I shouldn't know any of these people's name. They should be working. They should be boring ass cops and bureaucrats working to protect me, presumably completely apart from my attention, doing their job and busting right. criminals. The only reason anyone knows this is the criminal, the, the worst criminal in the country is now sitting in the most important job. In the and country. I don't know if you That's caught the problem. that, uh, Greg Gutfield of the five, you know, the five, he said on the air yesterday, Trump was radicalized by something okay because he was a Democrat and was fairly yeah. liberal, pro choice sure. liberal. Sure. Yeah. But he yeah. was radicalized. You know what he was radicalized by? Us, Fox News. Uh-huh. Wow. All he's doing is what we do, which is we bash the media. So he has turned, this is him bragging, by the way, Greg Gutfield bragging. So he has turned the White House into kind of like an alternative Fox show. Yeah. Where he sits there and he rips the media. And that is Greg Gutfield bragging about the president who is making the White House an alternative Fox show. Uh huh. And Fox News, of course, then is <laughs> is a Trump campaign organization. So, mm-hmm. you know, as you say, collusion. Uh, then we need a better word. Uh, let's talk about ACA for a minute, yeah, because uh, Mike Pence went to Wisconsin <laughs> and said, oh, you got to vote for that Republican senator because uh, we tried to repeal Obamacare. And with her help, we'll be able to do it after the election. Yeah. Now, Chris Murphy, Senator Chris Murphy said, quote, 
We tried to take health insurance away from 30 million Americans. And if you vote for Republicans, we will try to do it again, is a slogan I'm cool with. Uh (laughs) I think everybody, every Democrat would like to run on that. And should. And And they are. And they are. I know that Betsy Dirksen Londrigan is running on this. Absolutely running on that. And decided, actually decided to run. Her story is I decided to run during the beer blast in the Rhett Rose Garden when all these Republican congressmen were celebrating my kids losing their health insurance. You know, that is why she's running. Well, and this is the week that we found out the Trump administration has been creating stateless citizens. Absolutely. By denying passports to U.S. citizens, they're coming for you folks. They're coming for all of us. Don't think Mm -hmm. for a minute they're not. Uh, to U.S. citizens and accusing hundreds of Latinos along the southern border of using fake birth certificates to obtain U.S. citizenship. Yep. These are citizens, U.S. citizens. And it's based on skin color. It is, it is on not based color. on citizenship. It is based on ethnicity and skin color. That happened this week. And and yep. I, I had a um, uh, an email from one of our listeners, Raymond. Hey, Raymond, how's it going? Uh, who was like, I never thought he'd get that low. I never thought. Yep. I never thought in... You know, as bad as he is, going after stripping people of their citizenship, yeah, uh, is based on race. Based on race, and 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 this is the this is the part that I've been thinking about an awful lot, and I'm not going to be able to articulate it well, but I'm going to talk about it uh, over and over again on this podcast. It's there is a pattern recognition problem among not with Raymond. Raymond's a great guy, and we we love him, but among our media elite. Mm-hmm. This this perpetual look of dumbfoundedness mm-hmm. that they don't understand what they're watching. They don't understand what they're looking at. Their brains cannot process because they live in a gated city. They're, they're as I've used before, they're Prince Prospero in the Red Death with his mm-hmm. revelers. They're, mm-hmm. they're in a walled city. They, they have their own little universe. They don't really have any contact with the real world out here. And they have invented for themselves a, a mesmerizing fairy tale of what of what politics is like. And and what what who's to blame for everything? And the, it's always the extremes on both sides. And if only we had a McCain Lieberman party, our, our our nation would have been saved. And what we really need to do is reform Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid, and blah blah blah. You know the reform, you know the, the yes, rhetoric, right? Right. And they are unable to process. Their brains are simply unable to are wired so that they can't see the fascism staring them in the face. They can't do it. It's right in front of them. It's been right in front of them for thirty years. And they have trained themselves not to see it, to just walk past because it and ignore it. They, it. In the name of lacking bias in their right. coverage, which is not – that is not what we're talking about. Be, it's not about being biased. And who was it that said – you know, I think maybe – oh, it was Chuck Todd, wasn't it? Who yeah. said – uh, 40 years of Republicans telling us we're li- the liberal media and we're liberally biased and we have we're always so constantly careful not to show that uh-huh. has has worked to the benefit of Republicans in making uh, Americans distrust the media. And it's well, Fox News' fault. There's a brand new book based on a scholarly study. Of course, it only takes into consideration 2015 and 16, I believe. I don't uh-huh. know the title of it. It drops in about a month. It's three guys. You know, there, there's the Harvard guy and there's the there, – there's they're all – you know, scholarly, respectable men uh, who have studied this problem. Uh-huh. And and I checked that on Amazon. The hardback is $99. Now, yeah. maybe that's just a maybe that's just a placeholder price. But it's a it's an ex- big expensive book. And it's a it's a deep um, statistical analysis of of millions of tweets and behaviors and and tracking, but only for the last couple of years. And mm-hmm. you know what the, you know what they came you know conclusion they came to, Blue Gal? What? Media coverage and the way the left and the right process information is asymmetrical <laughs> it turns out i know this, this i hope you're sitting down in a comfortable chair because this is going <laughs> to shock the shit out of you no it's not <laughs> um on the right they just listen to whoever the fuck tells them what they want to hear and ignore everything else in the world and call people rhinos and squishes and scum who tell them otherwise and ignore everything on the left we value actual feedback and journalism and facts, and we actually change our mind. We find out we're wrong. And there's the whole democratic give and take informed citizenship process that you have in a healthy country with a healthy uh, skepticism for authority is happening all the time on the left. On the right, it's a fucking fascist cult. <laughs> but yeah. they, they only studied the recent election cycle because I, I, I have nothing – I have no reason to believe this is true in this case, but – 
it is clear that very much like after Obama won, mm -hmm. everything before Obama was off limits. Right. Because Bush isn't president anymore. He's not president anymore. And we're not going to talk about Michelle the Malkin. You know, right. she, that was her, that was their line. Right. Bush isn't president anymore. So we can talk about nothing except how Barama, Barack Obama is a Kenyan usurper and uh, illegitimate and wearing a tan suit. And yeah. So, and so we couldn't talk about the fact that the Tea Party was a fake. Was a, it was and a, it, was it a took stamp. the mainstream media over three years to figure that out, to figure oh, it, out, oh, no. these guys are Republicans. Six years, six yeah. to seven years. Wow. And six years, I would say, is, is when I started to notice it. And they didn't discover it. They admitted it because everyone knew. Everyone – see, here's the thing. Everyone knows this shit. Yeah. Everyone knows it. They just yeah. don't say it because saying it is bad for their career. It's bad for their career. That's the and point. So, and these folks don't have to worry about who's in office because what – Whoever is in office, what they need most is access to that person and a they quote do. from that person. Um, Ten Grain, this is just just to loop back to John McCain for a minute. Ten sure. Grain talked a lot about this in, this week in a wonderful post about John McCain and access journalism. And how John McCain was always available with a quote or a uh, talking point or I'll talk to you. He, he called reporters little shits and he, you know, cussed at them. Uh, but he would would take their question. He would take their question. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone has a John McCain story. Even uh, Charlie Pierce had sure. a John McCain story of sitting in the car with John McCain. And John McCain, he was, a, you know, a new reporter. And John McCain asked his opinion about something. So all of a sudden, he's bought into having a discussion with John McCain about some issue. And that access, that continual chumminess... And yes, that means John McCain was affable and he had a lot of good qualities and so forth. But it was a tool for him, sure. <laughs> you know, and he used the media. And so uh, I had a clip that I put with this post at Crooks and Liars when I cross posted 10 grains of Chuck Todd from 2005, I believe it was. Yeah. I, yes, 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 yes. Where uh, he's talking about, um, no, excuse me. I'm sorry. It was too, it had to be 2005. Seven. John McCain ran for president uh -huh. in 2008. Yes, he did. So it was, yeah, it was, it was late 2007. And John McCain had had a gaffe about the Iraq war and about yes. Sunni versus Shia. And Chuck Todd, this very young Chuck Todd is sitting there talking to uh, Russert on Meet the Press. That's when, that's when this was. And saying, well, yeah, he sort of just smashed together all of his talking points about Iraq and it came out wrong. But he has enough uh, cred with the media that they're going to let him say it was a gaffe rather right. than they can't possibly say it was a senior moment because that would be terrible. Or, but a they can, or a lie. But they can right. say it was a gaffe and they're going to let him off the hook on this one because he has right. enough cred with the media. God forbid this was Senator Obama or Mrs. Clinton, because right. this would be on a two day loop. Their gaffe about how they don't know what's going on in Iraq. Chuck Todd said this. Chuck Todd said this. Right. Yes. And, and it's and just who pointing out on, who was who looking on dreamily. <laughs> Peggy Noonan. She, looked, she was literally this. The, the players never change. No, the this was the amazing never, thing. Never changes. It was that presidential historian guy. Uh, John, Meacham. John Meacham and Peggy yeah. Noonan. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the only way dream. you get off that stage is, you know, rest in peace. Right. Uh, Tim Russert, because he passed yeah. away. That's how you get off NBC's Meet the Press. You die. Uh, mm -hmm. John McCain was on Meet the Press more than any other guest in yes, he history. Was. He, yeah, he was. He, well, we used to joke. He was the, the senator from Meet the Press. Right, right. And he was on there constantly. And this and you know is who not this? a good thing. This is a this makes it a game. And the second most frequent guest for a year and a half, I think, Newt Gingrich. Yeah, yeah. it's a club. It's, it's a, a club. fucking club. club. And as and they treat it as a game. Yep. They treat it as an absolute game. And um, I might have to pause and go and and see. I'm not sure if it's Ben Cohen, um, who said I created access journalism. Now I think it's time to stop. Mm, yeah. uh, I should have looked that up before the podcast, and I, I will Sorry. double check that because I'm not sure of the name. He'll put but that it, in his notes on at his blog, Drift Glass. Yeah, go Google Drift Glass. He'll find out. I will. Uh, let's get back to our news roundup. 
Uh, well, I, I do want to me. Oh, go ahead. I do want to add one more item up on this list, which is as the um, as we all agreed, no one on the left, but as everyone in the media agreed to pretend the the Bush administration never happened, right? To let everyone off the hook so they mm-hmm. can go on about the business of destroying the Obama administration right. and pretending the Tea Party was some new thing. The exact same cast of characters have all now agreed that everything that happened before the the Trump administration never happened. Right. So we're not going to examine the history of the Republican Party. You can pull our fingernails out. You can waterboard us. You can do whatever you want. You can threaten to, to fire us, but we're not going to fucking talk about the history of the Republican Party. And that has led to a spate of books by yes. never Trumpers yeah. who that are that are pseudo confessional. And I just want to point out the latest one is by Max Boot. Yeah, I love your post on this, by the way, <laughs> connecting it to the um, Star Wars novellas that all had different yeah. covers, but were the yes. same book. <laughs> yeah. As long hey, as long as we're it's, all the never Trumpers are selling the same book. And that book is basically liberals own words, which they are selling back to us for 20 bucks a pop. Uh-huh. And, and the title um, of the book is. <laughs> Uh, his book? No, all the books. The, all the books in your oh, Photoshop. The title, of, the, the title of all the books is, holy shit, the Republican Party's full of Republicans. <laughs> I never knew. Who knew? Oh, my God. How did this ever happen? But but it's it's an industry. It's a, it's a genre, and it pays very well. I, you know, I will go on a great length at some other podcast about Rick Wilson uh, has added a zero to his net income, according to himself, now that he's on the never the Never Trump bestseller list. But this is about Max Boot. And Max Boot, 12 years ago, the late Stephen Gilliard very accurately described Max Boot as a man who writes middle-class war porn. And why would anyone take him seriously? Which mm-hmm. is a very good question. Mm-hmm. Now, Max Boot has a, a book that's dropping in September called The Corrosion of Conservatism, Why I Left the Right. Oh, God. And if you go through, the blurbs are all heroic. You know, he's a fucking heroic. He's not now he's he's not only a Republican, but he's also not a Democrat, Blue Gal. You know what he is? Mm-hmm. He's an independent. He's an independent. And and he's gonna lead the way he's gonna fix this problem is he's gonna help lead a glorious centrist revolution. He's got he's got some competition. Because the <laughs> the, the, the extremes on both ends are very bad. So uh-huh. we need he need to help he needs to help create this nascent centrist movement to counter Trump's assault on democracy. And this book is blurbed glowingly by mm-hmm. John Meacham. <laughs> it, ha- it has to be Joe Scarborough, too. Joe Scarborough <laughs> and Bill Crystal. Yeah. It's a fucking yeah. circle jerk. And no yeah. one but yeah. those people are allowed to play. And and the price of entry is that yep. you agree to never fucking mention what happened before today. Never mention no. that Bill Crystal and Joe Scarborough are responsible for the disaster that we're looking at around it. Never. And if you do that, we will give you a book contract. We'll make you a guest on our shows. We'll give you a hand job under the table. We'll make sure your family never wants for anything. Yes. Drift class, yes. drift class, drift class, drift class. I blame a certain category of women progressives, and maybe not too progressive, but middle of the road Democrats, suburban women Democrats. Are they Pumas? Who, who really want everyone to get along and who yes. really want to believe that. I can be I'm a good Christian person so yes I'm I'm not a Republican I vote Democrat but I really want my friends across the aisle to come to some agreement with me about these things and work together and why can't we just be nice and not push our uh new friends farther to the right you know I've been chastised on Twitter by the by a certain person uh and I just was like no Screw this kumbaya nonsense. Mm-hmm. You know, this is about health insurance. And when we get, you know, we've said this on 10 podcasts now, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to be repetitive, mm-hmm. but you get Trump out of the picture, even get Pence out of the picture. You rebuild the, and rebrand the Republican Party, and they're coming for your Medicare, and they're coming for your health insurance, they're coming for your Social Security, because they've got a billion-dollar hole in the budget from their tax cut, and they know that's where they can get the money. Trillion and dollars. the 1% trillion that dollars. they represent, trillion, the 1% is the people they truly represent, the 1%, don't want to pay for boomers' health insurance. Don't want to pay for boomers' retirement and nursing home care. They don't want to pay for it. Yep. So, and and they don't want the the U.S. government to make their money worth less by printing money to make to pay for that. So 
print money to pay for our tax cut, sure, because sure. that puts money in our pocket. But don't print money to to pay for anyone else to have health insurance or health care into their old age. We well, we are ter- and they're really terrified of the cost of that. Well, this, this huge generation is is headed. You know, the ones that survive into their 80s, a lot of them, one out of three, are headed for a nursing home that's going to be paid for by Medicaid. Mm-hmm. And going and, to be staffed by people who weren't born here. Yeah. Well, if if they're lucky, yeah. if they're lucky and we don't, you know, uncitizen yeah. and make nation nationless people. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, in a way that's racist because they, this is something that my dad was on the phone with me about uh, yesterday talking about his health care and you know he's 82 and uh he saw a specialist this week and uh, the person's he, he laughed because the person's name was sickwell <laughs> <laughs> vladimir well, sickwell something yeah. like that it was yeah. it wasn't vladimir but it was he thought it was just funny that the doctor the surgeon's name was sickwell yes okay um but he he's was a foreign person, you know, who spoke perfect English mm-hmm. and uh, with an accent and clearly came from a country, not the United States, and is a specialist in a very uh, highly regarded hospital uh, taking care of a very specific problem where, you know, he, he makes a lot of money doing this. And he is, he is well compensated and very much needed for his technical skill, yes. uh, surgical skill. And so for us to pretend that, you know, what brown people are going to be doing in this country is cleaning up after nursing home patients is denigrating them. I don't want to do that. Uh, no, no. But we no, need, but we need immigrants very... of all varieties and at all skill yes. levels. And there, well, and nine times, well, four times out of five, mm-hmm. uh, the person who is helping, you know, mom in the nursing home or dad in the hospice right. is uh, a first generation is, American or, for, or absolutely. an immigrant. Absolutely. That is the and working hard at a job that nobody else wants to do. And putting their child through medical school. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's this the, the American story. That is the American well, and, story. Absolutely. And, yeah. And this, this, I, I do want to bring it back to World World War One and Two, just for sure, one moment, sure. which is you and I talked about sort of like, wow, it's weird that we're sort of watching all these things that all happen to take place in the same period. And you and I both thought of Mrs. Pettigrew lives for a day. Yeah, yeah, such it's a terrific, great movie, <laughs> terrific movie. And it, if you haven't seen it, we're not going to spoil it for you, but it has to do with people who survived the last war as World adults. World War One. Yep. Last yep. World War One, and. And the younger generation who has no real memory of it, mm-hmm. or doesn't mm-hmm. really understand what they went through and doesn't really understand the horrors of it. And the older people who are vastly different in economic standing in the society are, 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 are soul mates in their experience of that horrible time. And they, he's wealthy and she's not, but they both understand what's coming. And, and what and they the lost. Kids. Yep. And what they lost yep. and what the terrible price that they're about to pay because they know what's coming next. Yep. And and the young people around them have no idea what's coming. No, they don't. And yep. th- when I when when you and I talk about the ACA and healthcare and Medicaid and they're they're coming for it, it it does bother me a little bit that there seems to be no memory that that is the first thing that came after when Barack Obama was elected. Absolutely. And it was that the first thing that Bush... came after when George Bush was president. Yep. Exactly. First thing out of the box was let's, let's privatize social privatize security. Social we'll security. do a little bit of time yep. and we'll do it 55 and older and we'll find all sorts of ways of splitting, you know, the older generation from the younger, but we're coming for your fucking money. Mm-hmm. And because my friends in the stock market have a real need to play with a trillion dollars they don't have access to right now. Right. Right. And they're just going to, they're not going to stop doing yep. this. And that is their the party idea of that, that is the basis of their existence. Right. That party. is their philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. And and the idea that that if we just get rid of the if it's like the if it's like the Hussein government, remember the 52 deck? Yep. You know, if we just if we just electorally decapitate the regime, um, that somehow a Jeffersonian democracy will spring mm-hmm. up in its place. Mm-hmm. And if it, no, 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 no. The problem is the rotten soil from which these monsters grew. Yep. And they're going to grow a fresh crop of monsters who are going to be smarter and more capable and look better on Fox News and won't say out loud what they believe in quiet. Yep. And they're going to come right back after your Social Security if we don't rip the whole goddamn thing out by the roots. Yep. And I do and have a lot of hope me. looking at younger voters and how they're voting and what's happening in Florida. Gillum, Andrew Gillum, you mean? 
And yes, he was a Bernie endorsed candidate, but he was also a Hillary Clinton delegate. Exactly. And don't let the media um, make this a Democrats in disarray story. No. The 2016 Democratic primary is over. Right. <laughs> and right. I'm not going to call anyone a loser in that uh, battle at this point because it's over and we've got work to do. And so Andrew Gillum is now asked by Chuck Todd, are you a socialist? You know, yes, no one ever asked Donald Trump if you're a fascist, No, but, <laughs> but even sure. though he is one, yeah, but asking up. Andrew Gillum if he's a, he's a socialist and uh, he said, no, I'm a Democrat. <laughs> right. I'm an FDR Democrat. And that's what he should have said. He said, I'm a Democrat. I'm a real Democrat. That's what I do. Don't let the media tell you that Democrats in disarray. We have work to do. And mm -hmm. uh, Dirk Lash, you, you knocked on doors this week for Betsy Londrigan. I did. I did. And I, I can't tell you how much fun it is to knock on doors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I am not a social person by nature. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm kind of a big guy. So coming to someone's door, you know, in the evening can be a little, you know, especially in a neighborhood where maybe I don't belong wearing clothes that make me look like an authority figure. Um, I had the best time I met. Um, I met a Rodney Davis voter, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but he told me that the, uh, the two other women in his house, his wife and his daughter are probably going to vote for Betsy, which is terrific. And that he's voting for Rodney because Rodney stands with me. He's, you know, he's a union guy. Huh. And, and we had a really good conversation about being a union guy hmm. and what that means. And the fact that, you know, that you know there's no future for coal, right? Well, of course not. Of course there's no future. So I said, I used to do workforce development, and I'm for someone who wants to do a transition from that economy to this one and not kick 50-year-olds out, out of their jobs. Mm -hmm. You know who does that? Democrats do that. Yeah. And and I respect the fact that you're going to vote. I, I appreciate the fact you're going to do it. And he said, well, I'm really kind of on the fence. You know, uh -huh. I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, this is what my union wants, and I'm, I'm I want to be down with my union, but I said, well, you know, there is one party that's really been bashing unions and busting them for 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the Republicans. Yeah. So, you know, Rodney Davis, you might like him. And I respect that fact. I'm not going to argue with you over that. But if you make the Republican the majority, they're coming after your union. You have to know that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then I met a nice little old grandmother who was like, yeah, screw these guys. Where do I sign? <laughs> I want to appease all these fuckers. <laughs> and, you know, like, and it was great. It was great. And Dang, I got, granny. <laughs> I got I got to talk to to a woman on Medicaid who who was um sharing an apartment, clearly a very low income apartment, who was like she wasn't sure about voting or or where her polling place was, but but Medicaid is really important to her. Mm -hmm. Healthcare is mm -hmm. really important to her. And I got to talk to her for a few minutes about, well, here's where one candidate stands and here's this other guy who's trying to take it away from you. Yeah. So it really it's there's nothing more uh, as they told us you know, they do a little training before each one. Yeah. There's nothing more important than that face to face meeting. Mm -hmm. The phone bank is important, but you know, really the real the real meet is where you go out and talk to people. And I wanted to raise my hand and say, you know, the phone bankers are sitting right over there. Right next to you. Right over there. <laughs> There's nothing what they're doing is just keep your voice down. But but it's time to go out and knock doors and change people's minds and register them to vote and phone bank and get them to vote by mail. And talk to people one on one. Mm -hmm. If you can get two people to the polls who weren't going to go anyway, two votes to the polls, that will change everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because there's a whole bunch of people sitting out there not realizing that that this is, is important to them, that mm -hmm. this matters to them, that this shit is really important. It's not happening far away in Washington. This affects their lives. And you being at their door at six in the evening or ten in the morning or Saturday at noon. Being real nice and, and and saying please and thank you and and pointing out that these are issues that affect us and we as a community need to stand together really makes a difference. Yep. That is the difference between winning and losing. And uh, I was going to go online and find the vote by mail registration form that would get a ballot mailed to junior dude at college. And I didn't have to because J.B. Pritzker, the Democratic candidate for governor in Illinois, mailed him one. <laughs> Isn't, that nice? Isn't that nice? As a yeah. recently registered new voter, uh, you know, clearly uh, 18 years old, reg right. registering. I mean, uh, uh -huh. I'm sure they have all kinds of data on him as a registered Democrat and, and relatively recent. He was on the list to get that vote by mail card sent to his home registration address. 
So we forwarded that on, and he's excited because uh, vote by mail ballots get counted first. They do. So when they you do. see They're... when you see the the big board, when you see Steve Kornacki at the big board and the polls close, and all of a sudden you've got 13, 15, 20 percent of the vote come in right away, that's vote by mail. If you tell your canvasser you're going to vote by mail and you actually do it, they will never come to your house again. Yep. You'll never bother you again. Because that, yeah. that is a vote we can bank. Yeah. That is a vote we can put down in the books and not have to come back and not have to remind you that it's, you know, polling place, mm-hmm. election day, mm-hmm. get out there, mm-hmm. lines, you know, bring you an umbrella. I'm still going to go to my polling place because they have baked goods They there. have cookies at ours, and yeah. I, t- <laughs> I tend to go just because. But uh, it's a sacred thing, but it's a thing you can do by mail. Yep. And here's the reason you do that. Because there is, if the Republicans retain control of Congress, there's no way that they're going to provide a check on the guy who said this this week. Yeah, he said. What's going on he said that CNN is happening <laughs> to different degrees out of the networks with NBC News being the worst. The good news is that Andy Lackey is about to be fired, question mark, for incompetence. And much worse, when Lester Holt got caught fudging my tapes on Russia, they were hurt badly. Now, uh, that lunatic is the president of the United States who is now just fucking raving, lying, bullshit, nonsense all day, every day. This is this is the one that, that you know, this is there's the Monty Python sketch about the Piranha Brothers. Yeah. Uh, even the police began to st- sit up and take notice. Yeah, no, this is, and this is the, the week that the FBI had to tell the so-called president of the United States, you're full of right. shit. This is an interview that took place 15 months ago. Right. On TV, there's, this is the thing. Crazy it's been Uncle played Liberty. over and over again. <laughs> Crazy Uncle Liberty doesn't realize that there. What? How? This is a guy who had a TV show for fifteen years. Doesn't know how how videotape works. Right. Uh, right. No, th- but that's not really true. What he knows is that his supporters, the Republican base, are reprogrammable meatbags who will believe yeah. anything. Mm-hmm. So if they've been watching this tape, you know they've been avoiding this tape. Let's face it; they've been they've yeah. been switching the channel every time the subject comes up. But if their dear leader comes on and says, it's all a fake, it's a fake, they fudged it, it's a fake, and they're going to get fired for it, they'll believe it. That's And those people are going to go out and vote in November. Yep. Which is why you have to go out and vote, which is why twice as many of us have to be out there voting in November. All right. We're um, going to do lightning round now. Yes. Um, uh, go right ahead. You do, you do the odds. Go ahead. <laughs> Trump called on the U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice to tell the head of the FISA court to question the FBI and Justice Department about their use of the Steele dossier. Because, you know, that's what you do when you have a problem. You blow on a call to the head of the Supreme Court mm-hmm. and tell them to, to be do your, your dirty personal work for you. mm-hmm. Yeah. In 2016, Trump and Michael Cohen tried to buy all the damaging information in that National Enquirer safe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Cool. Good, cool plan, bro. Uh, the same guy who just blew a $1.4 trillion hole in the budget, the same party, uh, to provide tax cuts for billionaires and corporations just turned around and canceled pay raises for 2 billion civilian federal employees in order to put our nation on a fiscally sustainable course. Also to make sure that those people get out and vote because you know what? You fucked with my mm-hmm. paycheck and now I'm going to vote you out of office. Way to go, big man. Uh, a California man threatened to shoot Boston Globe employees because they had an editorial response to Trump's ta- attacks on the news media. And, uh, of course, Donald Trump says that the Democrats and the left are violent. So does Tucker Carlson all the time. All right. Yeah, of course they do. Um, the White House counsel, Don McGahn, discovered that he's uh, not going to have a job after yeah. the- <laughs> because he read yeah. Twitter and found out from his boss that he's being fired. Uh, step down, I believe, is the technical term for it. But the good people at Where the Good Lord Splits You, Emergency Farewell Party Supplies, will be showing up at Don McGahn's office sometime in the mm-hmm. next few months. Uh, this was the when the FBI said Trump was full of shit. I believe Trump accused China of hacking Hillary Clinton's email. <laughs> this, I can't. Yeah, yeah. Okay, China. 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 Sure. Um, Donald Trump said his administration did a fantastic job in Puerto Rico, despite the official death toll rising now to two thousand nine hundred seventy-five Americans. He, he threw paper That's towels real Americans. good, though. Yeah, yeah, he did. And, uh, leak, and this is worse. worse than Katrina. Than, literally this is, worse this is than now, Katrina. Yeah. By a lot. Yeah. Uh, leaked emails reveal that a former Homeland Security policy analyst who resigned last week has ties to, guess what, Driftglass? White nationalists. Uh, vertical marketing. 
Um, no, you see no, white nationalist. Oh, it's it's a not if it's not a Russian under the rock, it's a Nazi. Okay. He was shopping for office furniture on his computer. No, Ron DeSantis, about whom we Speaking spoke earlier. Speaking of white nationalists, yeah, <laughs> warned Florida voters not to monkey this up by electing his Democratic opponent, who's African American. He also he threw also, in the word. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He he also threw articulate. in the word articulate. Yeah. 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 Trump accused Google of being rigged against him uh, he, as 10 grain on mock paper scissors has said he's he's declaring war on algorithms. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. The search results for Trump news show mostly bad coverage about him yeah. from the fake news media. That's just coverage, Donald. Yeah. That's all that we, is. We used to be at war with Al Qaeda. Now we're at war with algorithms. Algorithms. So, yeah. 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 Um, starting September 4th, just just right after the uh, Labor Day holiday. The USDA, the USDA will begin bribing farmers in Trump country with $4.7 billion of your tax money of a total $12 billion, which will be called compensation for the trade war that President Stupid started with China. Mm-hmm. So way to go. Were you, were, apparently welfare is cool. Socialism is cool. As long as it's being used to bribe Trump voters. Yeah. And uh, God forbid you should use it on free school lunches like they're doing in Houston. And I had to go on Twitter this morning and notice that people there are, of course, Republicans bitching about the taxpayers are paying for free school lunches. And uh, our school district did this immediately as soon as they yes. found out that they were uh, the USDA would not allow them to use uh, free lunch statistics in order to gain grants that you couldn't right. use private information uh, that's used for the free school lunch program for any other purpose, they dropped charging for lunches. There was no point. It is a money-saving move to simply give every student in the school a free lunch unless you can use the statistics to apply for grants. Uh, There's no point. So uh, this is money saving, folks, to just say, nope, we're not going to have bookkeeping on 50 cent lunches. We don't need to do that. All right. Uh, Republican Senator James Inhofe said McCain was partially to blame for the controversy over the lowering of the White House flag to honor his death. I yeah. Again, this is right up there with uh, Hugh Hewitt saying, Donald forgot, what do you, say? you know. What do you say? Well, you, and the only the only solution is to take it up with the people who put people like this in office, because he <laughs> yeah. he reflects their he reflects his voting base. Yeah. They're terrible people who really this is in, in my heart of hearts. I'm thinking, you know, the, the the Trump voter voter base, Republican base, makes a serious argument for monarchy. Yeah, because forty <laughs> percent of this country cannot govern themselves and cannot be trusted to do anything but burn the country down if you, if they're anywhere near power. Mm-hmm. And that's going to keep being a problem until there are fewer of them than there are of us. And we vote more often yeah. than they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the former doorman at Trump World Tower uh, has now been free, liberated, if you will, to discuss information regarding Donald Trump's illegitimate child. Now, I don't like using the word illegitimate child because no human is illegitimate. But uh, I, I can't think of a out better of word wedlock. than that. Born out of wedlock. Out of wedlock. Yes, yes. Trump uh, actually had a QAnon conspiracy crackpot in the Oval Office last week. Good going. Yes, he did. Uh, I'm pushing a new nickname for Ted Cruz, Mime Fuhrer, if you will. Please join in. <laughs> everyone Everyone, have a good time with that. Uh, Ted Cruz decided uh, that it would be a great idea to, to bag on Beta O'Rourke, his opponent in the race for the Senate in Texas, by making him look cool and reminding people that he was a rock star. <laughs> Yeah, this was the the uh, Texas GOP's great idea. Yeah. Well, yeah, but he, I'm sure he kind of approved of it. Uh, yeah. Right now, it's almost a dead heat. I believe um, Cruz leads by one percentage point. Uh, and there's an actual statistical chance that there will be a Democratic senator from Texas, which would absolutely make my year. That yeah. would be amazing. Yeah. And Beto O'Rourke is a very good candidate. Oh, my gosh. He is focused. Oh my gosh. He's, he's going he is... to go national. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Trump also lashed out at uh, top C- NBC and CNN executives on Twitter and called on AT&T to fire CNN chief Jeff Zucker. You know, now, <laughs> I hate it when I agree with Donald Trump. I really do. <laughs> Jeff Zucker should be fired, yeah. but not for the reasons no, Donald Trump no, thinks whole, it should be. <laughs> whole portfolio of other reasons at the other end of the spectrum. Yep. Um, and we talked and about the Manafort crony who pled did, guilty today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Donald Trump says all pretty pretty much thinks all Trump money is his money to spend in any way that he wants. Yeah. 
and uh, Mueller has a tax return. So we'll, we're looking forward to seeing that. You know, I we we are recording this late on Friday because we were thinking maybe there would be some news uh, yeah. from the I, I Mueller. Just... You know, part of me says yes, and part of me remembers how everyone sat around waiting for Karl Rove to be indicted, and it never mm-hmm. happened. So mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. I have learned my lesson about, you know, about Christmas Day and anticipating gifts that are not promised and are only rumored. Mm-hmm. So uh, let everyone just be cool. Everyone just stick to your guns, focus on what you can do, increase the vocabulary of talking about our politics using the language you learned on this podcast mm-hmm. and get out and knock doors and, and help people vote, get them to the polls. And that that's the most important thing you can do between now and November. Truly. Yep. Yep. Uh, I just wanted to add something about that DHS staffer. They, there's more news about that. His name is Ian Smith. He's the DHS staffer who had to resign due to white nationalist ties uh, he was a participant in immigration policy meetings at the White House. As, as <sighs> yeah. uh, he also expressed his enthusiasm for a Judenfrei cleansed for Jews dinner party. Uh, of course he did. I, and Chris Hayes has just tweeted 29 minutes ago, I think it's safe to say that a person who enthusiastically attends a dinner party advertised as a Judenfrei is a Nazi. Uh, So, yeah. And uh, on a much happier note, uh, the British Army's household division uh, at Buckingham Palace played Aretha Franklin's (laughs) R-E-S-P-E-C-T at Buckingham Palace. So the Queen of Soul was honored at Buckingham Palace. Uh, Well, the Brits are killing it. First of all, they told uh, Devin Nunez to get the fuck out of here. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Secondly, um, I, I I, I believe it's Prince Harry. Yes. Who was singing the part of George the Third in Hamilton? Yeah, he went he went and sang like three words of it, but it was a fundraiser. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. come yeah. on. Come yeah. on. I mean, you know, this is th- this is why I'm advocating monarchy, yep. Lugel, because you know, we could have Barack Obama come back, actually be a king, which, <laughs> which you know, he would, was for the last would make few Fox years News happy presidency yeah. because Congress wouldn't let um, him do anything else. Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, Drift Glass, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Buddy Boy. Buddy Boy is an adopted kitty, and uh, the person who sent in Buddy Boy uh, highly recommends adopting kitties from a shelter. We all love doing that. Uh, Barack Hussein, the Kenyan usurper, is from a shelter, so we are very happy to do that and endorse that. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Happy Labor Day! Happy Labor Day, Postal guys! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. It's getting to be, you know, pumpkin spice, if that's your thing. You know, if you can afford to buy a pumpkin spice latte for yourself or any other espresso-based beverage, think about buying one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and we do need your money. Uh, But five bucks donation is sufficient, and we appreciate it. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on whatever social media you happen to be hanging out at. We appreciate it so much, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties wish everyone a happy Labor Day, especially all you union thugs out there, without whom the American middle class would not exist. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.